The Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left hand in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten disciples heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so with you, among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Feel free to have a seat. I love to tell the story, how pleasant to repeat. Which seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story, t'will be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Grace, peace, and a story of love are ever ours, young or old, this day and always, through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. So this is our final Sunday of giving in faith together, gift. As we um, wrap up our invitation to tell and invest in the story of, the story at, and the story from TLC. As we, as a uh, community, navigate and invest in life, because we are truly a community that does highs and lows together. So our question over the last three weeks has been, what would you miss if this place disappeared? How would you miss this place, this expression of faith? And mind you, not really the place, but the people, the opportunity to gather. What stories would and do you tell? What are your faith stories? So, people bemoan that the church is shrinking and aging. Would you agree with me? That's something that I hear often, that pastors talk about often, that we talk about a golden age of church when we had tons and tons of kids in VBS. Um, And we're asking the question and want to know, where are young people today? Well, each and every week we've been able to look at this picture Uh, which is one of the first gatherings of TLC back in the 1960s. And if you look at this, would you say life has changed? Who's wearing a hat out there? How about some high heels, some skirts, some dresses, some kids with ties? I want to see Caleb and Clayton with ties next week. Things have changed. Life feels like it's on warp speed. We are more and more connected by Facebook, by Instagram, by texting, and yet how do we feel? Even more disconnected. Our youth have teams and activities that happen on Wednesdays and now on Sundays. We now have travel teams. We now have travel sports. 
Expectations for success and how to be successful seem to be getting more and more complicated and less faith dependent. I read something recently, uh, and I think it was in our video that I showed last week, that um, our youth do not know the Bible stories like those youth probably knew the Bible stories. These are things that we can bemoan. Today in Mark's gospel, James and John ask Jesus to give them whatever they ask. They say, grant us to sit, one at your right and one at your left in your glory. That's bold. I think even now, knowing how much Jesus loves me and what Jesus has done for me and that I plan firmly to go to heaven, I don't think if Jesus were in this room that I would be able to say, Jesus, give me whatever I want. That's pretty bold. I would say that our kids are pretty bold. Our kids are pretty bold, and they ask some things that were like, hmm, so if you're an elder, I would count myself an elder now because my kids are Generation Z, and now we're talking about Generation Alpha, I think. So I'm wondering if one of my youth can um, uh, explain this to me. Uh, the, oh shoot, I didn't actually write it down. How would you say this? The music, oh, th it's right. The music was total skibbity, but the fits were mad lit. What does that mean? You don't know? Gavin, do you know what that means? No? Okay. So it just goes to show, just because it says that's what the generation is about. The music was total skibbity. Do you know? The music was totally what? That's right, that is exactly it. The music was bad and the fashions were awesome. The music was total skibbity, but the fits were mad lit. <laughs> but I have to say, we probably in our own generation had words and language and things that our elders were like, what? And then as parents, especially parents of youth, they think they know all the things, right? And they don't. So our youth really, are they that much different? Are they really that much different? So Jesus says to John and to James, and I think says to us, you don't know what you are asking. You don't know what you are saying. You don't fully understand it. And you need to see those that are here. You need to hear those that are here. And you need to take time, intention, and investment. TLC took time, intention, and investment with our youth this summer. And so the rest of our message is going to be hearing from them, hopefully in language we understand, <laughs> about the opportunities that we experienced uh, this summer. So I am going to invite, first of all, Gavin and Jax up, and um, they will share a little bit with uh, us about particularly Voice of Truth, but they went to two experiences this summer. Is that on? Do you see a little green light? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they went to two experiences this summer. Uh, what you see in the back is called Voice of Truth, and that is a local service project where we sleep at a church, um, have food and service together. And so, what was your favorite part? Did you prefer Voice of Truth or Camp more? Probably Voice of Truth. So tell me why. Because I like it how we go to a different place every single day. Okay. How about you, Gavin? Pass the mic. Um, ours is when we like help people. Uh -huh. I think my favorite is when we went to the shelter to help the dogs. Because there were puppies. Yeah. We got to have a puppy fest after we helped. So. so Voice of Truth was your favorite, but camp was still good, right? Mm -hmm. And you liked serving. Where did you see God in that experience? Everywhere. Oh, take the mic. I saw him everywhere. Everywhere. Do you see him every, everywhere in everyday life? Mostly, yes. Mostly, yes. Okay. But it's obviously much easier, right? Okay. How about you, Jax? Where did you see God? Basically, like he's had everywhere. Okay. During the camps. Okay. Okay. So service, seeing God everywhere. What do you look forward to next summer, 2025? 2025, just so you know, we have Voice of Truth in camp again. Hi, Voice of Truth. Hopefully doing the flood things again. 
awesome, right? Especially because this year has been had so much flooding. So, and that'll be your third time doing Voice of Truth, right? No. No? Only your second? We just did it. Yeah, I think it's, just, it's going to be your second. Okay. All right, how about you? What are you looking forward to, Gavin? Take the mic. I hope everything is the same and that nothing changes because it's, be it's best the way it is. Okay. All right, can we give them a round of applause for serving? <laughs> All right, I'll take the mic. And while they go back to their seat, so did you hear they most appreciated serving? And they saw God everywhere. We need to take time and intention and investment. Next, I'm going to invite up Natalie. Natalie's going to talk to us about camp. Next slide. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> so this was your first time to camp. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite thing at camp? And make sure you talk into the mic. Um, my favorite part about camp was meeting new people and doing all the activities. Like nice. We did high ropes and a bunch of other stuff. Right. And I, had, I forgot to say about Gavin and Jax, but I was going to comment about what I saw uniquely because I was at each of these, and it's a unique opportunity to see how they are as individuals. And uh, Natalie is just a shining light who easily, easily makes friends. Mm -hmm. So that was a beautiful thing. So where did you see God in all those different experiences um, in making friends? I saw God through um, everything in nature because like we were outside the whole day mm -hmm. other than like at lunch and stuff mm -hmm. um and in bible study and stuff nice we we did a little bit of laughing and crying in bible study didn't we or at least the adults did yeah the adults really. always cry we're always so weepy it's not even funny are you going to join me at camp this summer are you uh, thinking next of, summer next summer yes. yes are you thinking about maybe voice of truth as well maybe yeah. maybe yeah but we're always good about talking right so um, I, uh, another thing is, too, um, you were excited to meet new people, <laughs> and you asked us for prayers that there would be kind people in your cabin. Did yeah. that end up being the case? Yeah, mostly. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being honest. So can we give Natalie a round of applause? I'll take that. Thank you, thank you. And our final opportunity was something that only comes up every three years. And uh, this year we got to go to New Orleans and it was our ELCA youth gathering where 16,000 Lutherans gathered uh, to worship God, to uh, talk about some pretty challenging topics. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna invite one of my adults, Jane Cooley up to kick us off in, in talking about this. Uh, Jane Cooley was, is a retired uh, French teacher and has done a few trips over your time with, with youth. Um, so what was your favorite part about um, the gathering? My favorite part was actually seeing 16,000 youth <laughs> Lutherans together and the energy was just electric. It was really, I have never been to um, a big youth gathering like that before. I've been to summer camp, I've been to you know various other things, but not like that. So that was really awesome. And that's where I saw God. But I will tell you also, Pastor Kate had two things for me to like think about. And one of them was what was the most difficult um, while we were there, and what was the most difficult day because we, there were different themes um, created to be Created to be, where do they go? Of course, I can't find them. Uh, created to be brave, authentic, free, disruptive, and disciples. Yeah, the one that was created to be authentic, we heard from a young woman, and uh, um, these people were part of the team, and they were there every night at the mass gathering, and they were doing all the, all the dancing, all the singing, all the presenting, all the everything. And this one woman who was a young woman, just beautiful young woman, blonde, just absolutely stunning. And when it was her turn to speak, she told us that she was transgender. She was the one, and I had seen this Facebook post, that this young, like maybe nine or 10 year, 11 year old girl who was with a sign saying, I'm the transgender that everybody is supposed to be so afraid of. And she was this young, beautiful girl. And she, she had known at a young age that she was not in the right body. And I mean, <laughs> that was just stunning because if you think you know what transgender is, you don't. 
We don't, we don't have a clue. And that's also a, one of the places where I saw God, is because everybody was so accepting. And I'm going to give kudos to our youth also, and also to Laura, because traveling together when you don't really know each other that well, I mean, some of us did, but not that well, into a place that's new and loud and crazy and hot. <laughs> it was hot there. And then cold, too. <laughs> hot outside, freezing cold inside. Right. So everybody was so nice and helpful to each other. And, I mean, we had problems, and they were solved. We had issues, and everybody was just willing to just be the best version of themselves. That was awesome. That's where I saw God. Awesome. Thank you. Can we give Miss Jan a round of applause for being an adult to help with that? And now I'm going to invite Caleb and Clayton up, who also joined us. They were our two male representatives of a very girl group. So. Awesome. Okay, so what was your favorite part about the gathering? Make sure you talk in the mic. Up by your mouth. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Honestly, I don't know. You don't know? There's a lot of good parts. About a it. lot of good parts. Well, that's not a bad thing to say. I'll, t I'll Honestly, take that as an answer. Um, I, I liked how much free time we had, too, so we can just, like, go wherever we wanted. Because it's a lot to see, yeah. right? Caleb, how about you? I like, <coughs> I like going to the... <laughs> I like going to like the stadium and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you have the mic, just keep it. Where did you see God and all of that um, awesomeness, free time uh, stadium? Probably in the stadium as well. Because mm -hmm. there was a lot of people having fun and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So Awesome. And keeping the mic, what do you think was your most challenging topic? And let me know if you need me to repeat them. Trying sure. to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't one of the topics. Brave, authentic, free, di okay, disruptive. You, ha <laughs> you are good at that. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's all right. And then uh, give the mic back to Clayton. Uh, I asked you about where you saw God. Uh, what was, uh, all right, then you, where did you see God? On the fence post. <laughs> On the fence post? Remember the little figure? Yeah, the little figure. All right, no, I'm not remembering. When we came out of the grocery store, there's a little Jesus figure on the fence. Okay, apparently. Oh, I don't know this story. I need to find out this story. So you saw Jesus on a fence post. That's awesome. And I hope other places as well. And what was your most diff difficult topic between brave, authentic, free, disruptive, and being a disciple? Uh, no. You don't know? This is typical Clayton answers. <laughs> so what I found out about Caleb and Clayton is Caleb, this is pure Caleb. Caleb keeps us in stitches. And Caleb also wants to make sure that we never have too much silence. And did you know how many varieties of whistles there are? <laughs> so that was an awesome thing that I got to know about Caleb. He wants to make sure that we are always having fun together. And then Clayton did an amazing thing for us. I, he uh, is our drummer many Sundays um, for worship and is an amazing drummer. And we have uh, one day where we meet together as a synod, as a, a region, uh, and have music and whatnot. And I invited him to be our drummer. Well, I thought it was only going to be a couple hundred people because in previous years, it's just been a synod. Well, this was the region, the whole region of Indiana, Michigan, uh, Ohio, and Kentucky. 1,300 people. Clayton played drums in front of 1,300 people, and he rocked it. <laughs> because he has the opportunity and the love and the support every Sunday to lead us in worship. And so he took that gift, and I told him, I saw Pastor Ben, who pulled the band together, um, and he was asking about him and just telling me and telling others how wonderful he was. So these are the stories that we need to share that you guys have taken the time and intention and investment. And speaking of investment, I often get excited and forget things I have planned. So you all invested very specifically and did bingo. And some people were very, very excited about bingo. So Chuck, 
you are definitely getting one of these, even if you don't get picked. So this is yours, Chuck. So you're going to grab an envelope, remember, and I'm going to need you to tell whose name that is, anyone. that anyone who's the lucky winner who, who gets a praline from New Orleans who invested in this opportunity. Turn it over. Who is it? Yep. Oh, Doris. Doris Zawicki. Yay, she gets a praline. So you get to give this to her. They're going to come down. Caleb, who do you got? You can't read it. The Fagermans, Jerry and Marlene. So, all right, I'm going to take the mic. And Doris, if you could raise your hand. And Marlene, if you could raise your hand, you can get your pralines. Thank you. And next up, I think I have uh, Jules. Cool. So I got to hear about the Jesus story. Um, so <laughs> what was your favorite part of gathering? Uh, I liked mass gathering where like we were, because like it was like, it was, there's so many people there, which was like really scary a lot of times, but also like it was kind of just a vibe. Nice. It was kind of just a vibe. Nice. And the thing that I got to know and love about um, Jules is she was like, we are eating beignets. I am having a etouffee and we are going to go and eat all the foods. And we, food's great. Food was great. That was one of your hopes. Love did food. did it meet it? Yes. All right. I, 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 and the so other nice. thing was we we stumbled across this beautiful bookstore and we had to keep negotiating. Okay, who's staying with Jules so she can stay in the bookstore for an hour to find some books to take home? It and then found so a book cool. in French. Have you read it all? Uh, I've gotten like halfway through it. It's Amazing. So cool. It's Amazing. a history book. So. Amazing. It's really cool. So what was your most challenging topic as far as our topics of brave, authentic, free, disruptive, and being a disciple? Um, probably free, just because like, I've always felt like I have to come, come, come to, I, hang on, English is, I'm very good at it most of the time. Not skibbity, you're not skibbity <laughs> at it? <laughs> um, being free, because I've always like com compartmentalized myself. That's not how it's pronounced, but we're going with it. Um, because like I've always felt like we have to like put ourselves in boxes even in school and stuff and so like being able to like just like kind of put those to the side was like difficult. Okay. And it's something you can continue to work mm -hmm. on, right? It's something I'm still working on. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh pick an envelope and let's see who is our next lucky winner for uh, help. <laughs> the Raymonds, <laughs> Brian and Kim Raymond. They too get a praline. Let's give a round of applause for Natalie. They, Natalie. Oh, oh, Jules, I'm tired. I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you. All right, now I've got Gwen. Miss Gwen went on all three opportunities with me this summer. We really, really got to know each other, didn't we, Gwen? Yes, and she's tired of me now. No, I'm not. You don't get to speak for me. You don't get to speak for me. What was your favorite across all the opportunities? Am I allowed to say that I liked all of them? Of course. I liked all of them. I, there wasn't necessarily a favorite, but maybe New Orleans. If I had to pick one, it would be New Orleans because it's like I got to see a new place. Nice. And that yeah. was very nice. Yeah, and that you're not exactly with 16,000 people five <laughs> days in a row, right? Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Um, where did you see God in all of that? Where I, I saw God in whenever I was having a moment or I was having a hard time. There would be people, either it was, if it was like the kids that I was with or someone that I just happened to pass by and I was having a moment, they would just be very kind and just stay with me and be like, okay, what do you need? Like, do we need to take a minute? Okay, let's take a minute. All right, do you need water? Do you need this? Do you need that? And then just helped me through it and I was really appreciative of that. And so God showed up through people. Yes, ma'am. And the thing that I found out about Gwen, and I continue to find out about Gwen, is that we're very similar. We, um, the world is very overwhelming at times. And uh, we had a lot of opportunities to get to know each other. And like you said, to take a moment and talk through how we were going to do things. And there were some times when we wanted to go home. And she stayed in each and every minute and made it to the very end. And it was amazing. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> so I need you to pick an envelope then. Who do we got? You need help? Yes, please. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. Ellie. Is Ellie here? Ellie Sivik? There she is. Yay. Awesome. All right. She's way in the back there. Can we give a round of applause for Gwen? Gwen. 
I still have two more uh, pralines and I'll get that figured out, but we had one more person join us who we have now launched into uh, adulthood as such. She was our, our personal selfie. Julia Blanchard it just has a gift for taking selfies. Um, and I asked her the same questions and she wanted you to know this and is at CMU right now and uh, shares this video with us. Hi everyone, it's Julia here. Um, I'm here to uh, answer some questions about the youth gathering over the summer. So the first one is, what was your favorite part of the TLC summer experience? Um, for me, I would say the mass gatherings. Those were absolutely incredible. Um, getting to see how many different people were around me was just incredible. And the fact that there were 50,000 people gathered around there was insane. Um, hearing the amazing speakers talk was incredible. It was just amazing doing like this sweet little community service things meant a big deal to me because I have always loved doing community service. I always love the way I feel after helping out a <clears throat> community in need. Um, where did I see God? I saw God pretty much everywhere. Um, I really felt I really felt my faith just growing when I went and um, being around that many people who have that strong of faith was incredible and getting to see people my age um, was also a really, really good thing for me, um, especially for me going into college. Um, so it definitely taught me a lot going into college and how everything's going to be okay, even when you're placed in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of people, but um, it was really incredible. Um, what do you look forward to next summer? through TLC summer experiences. Kind of same thing. I really just hope that um, our youth kind of grows. It, I just feel like it's growing more and more. Um, and I'm excited for more opportunities like this because I will gladly take these opportunities ahead. Maybe even um, do one of the volunteer opportunities they have at the gatherings. But yeah, overall it was one of the most life-changing experiences, and I know it's cliche, but it really was. And um, New Orleans is amazing. All the people were amazing there. Um, it was just a really, really good time. Really good food, great people, great music, um, and a good time. It was really great. And I, I wouldn't have um, ever thought that I would do something like that within TLC. I've been a part of TLC for my entire life and I've never got to do something that life-changing and that amazing so it was a lot of fun and thank you <laughs> so let me see if you were listening if you paid attention if you took some uh, investment in uh, some time where did these kids see God everywhere. everywhere and what did they most like doing serving you listened you listened Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Life is giving grace and abundance is lifelong. This story is for this age and the next. Last week we heard about the next. We, today we hear about today. This age too. These kids get it. And guess why they get it? Not because of me. Because of you, they've grown up in this community. They've embraced uh, Gwen, who joined us around the same time as I came. Every moment that we have pouring into them, investing in them, they get it. They get the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth. And so we as a church, as a community, need to share that story more rather than bemoaning the Golden Age stories because there are some awesome stories still happening and still yet to come. So we're wrapping up our annual stewardship. Again, the photo is the first gatherings of, of uh, TLC. They had stories of hope that have brought us to today. Do you think they would be a little excited, a little jazzed about the stories that we shared? A little beyond maybe what they even thought? Let us ever remember that Jesus' story is epic. What he did for us is epic. And his day-to-day -day encounters with our youth, with our elders, with us, with those that he transformed in the Bible, 
The whole Bible is stories about God, about our stories and God. Let us keep finding God in our stories. This is our opportunity then to steward those and more. In just a moment, we will sing the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, as our message song. And during that time, the ushers will dismiss each one of you as uh, we do for communion to come forward to the gift box, giving in faith together. If you have a commitment, those are uh, the yellow forms, and then the time and talent sheets are the green forms. If you have availed yourself of those, I invite you to place those in the box today. If you've already done a commitment in another way, I ask you to recommit yourself. And if a commitment is not your practice today, it is still a chance to come forward. To come forward and, as I said, place your hand on the box and say a prayer of thanks and a prayer of love uh, that God has given for us. Thank you to God for your story and for God's story. So today we commit to investing in and giving toward continuing this community, these experiences, these stories of faith, to continue being a shining light of Jesus in our lives and in this community, to continue to be the loving church, to continue to be the small church with the big heart, to continue to worship, to care, to share, to be generous, to live in wisdom, to live in community, to continue to faithfully share God with all people. Because as Ephesians tells us, God is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. So to him be glory in the church and in Christ to all generations. As we enter into this time of intentional giving and investment, I will say a brief prayer. So the Lord be with you. And guess what? I don't have my prayer, so I'm going to wing it. <laughs> Good and gracious God, we thank you for these stories of faith. We thank you that your story for us is love. And we thank you that your deep love for us and gives us a story that needs to be shared and heard by the person just in front of us, by the world, by a world that's hurting. So this day, as we come forward, may, me, may we say thanks. And may you place upon our hearts one individual who has brought us to this place, whose story we need to share. And may you also place upon our hearts someone who needs to hear our story of how you love us. So thank you, Lord, for being an abundantly loving and giving God. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. And so, TLC, here's to the next season of stories. In Jesus' name, amen.